In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a class website using Google Sites. Although Google Sites isn't the most beautiful web page designer, the fact that it's so easy to use and that it integrates with all Google products makes it a great option if you want to set up a dynamic website for your class that's easy to update. If you already use Google Classroom, setting up a Google Sites web page is going to significantly upgrade the quality of your digital classroom experience. And these days with all the uncertainty about whether or not we're going to be teaching remotely, in person, or in some form of blended learning, I think it's really important to have a robust website where you house all of the important information for your course so students can access it in class or at home. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom. As always, if you find the tips that I share in this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share it with other teachers that you know. You can also visit my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com for additional resources, tips, and ideas for how to use education technology. In this video, I'm going to start off by showing you a demo class website that I designed using Google Sites. Then I'm going to walk you through all the nuts and bolts for how to set up a web page, as well as give you some different ideas for how you might use it. You can see on the home page that I've included a short description of what the course will be about, as well as some images to make it look a little bit more interesting. Then I included an about page where I have short descriptions and images for all the different components of the course, as well as an about the teacher section. Then you'll see that I've made a page for a calendar view. Here I've synced my Google Classroom calendar. So if students were to click on an assignment, it would first take them to their Google Calendar, and then when they clicked on the assignment, it would take them into Google Classroom. The calendar view is really a great way for students to just get an overview of all the different events and assignments that are happening in a single month. Then you'll see that I've included a page where I'm going to be posting all of my assignments. I'm going to show you a couple different strategies for how you might use this here. So you'll notice on Monday, that what I've done is posted an entire Google slide lesson. The hyperlinks inside of this slide are also live. So if a student were to click on the Screencastify tutorial that I made, it would open up that tutorial in another window. Then you'll see that I've also included a hyperlink directly to a Google Classroom assignment. So if students click on that link, it will take them directly to Google Classroom where they can complete and submit their work. For Tuesday, I'm showing you an example of what it might look like to sort of replicate the HyperDoc experience inside of a Google Sites web page. So here I first included some instructions for students to watch a video that I embedded from YouTube. Then students will click on this button to access a Padlet where they will post about something related to the video that they just watched. Scrolling down, you'll see that I've also embedded an image of a graphic organizer that they're going to be filling out. I included a link to another website where I want students to visit to gather some different information. And then lastly, I included another button to a note taker that students are going to fill out in order to complete the assignment. One thing I've done here as well to get around the issue of students needing to make a copy of a document for themselves is force push make a copy to students and a little bit later, I'm going to show you how I did that. Lastly, you'll see that I've also included a page where I'm going to be posting student work. So I'm just gonna show you some different examples of the types of media that you can embed here. First, you'll see on the podcast page that I've embedded some graphics that students design for a podcast episode, as well as an audio file that can be played and listened to directly on the website. Then you'll see that I've included a page for video reports. Here, I included a hyperlink out to another web page where you could watch the video report that students had created. And then lastly, I included a graphic design page. Here, you'll notice that I posted graphics that students designed, as well as short descriptions that students wrote about the person that they studied for Black History Month. Then below, you can see another way of formatting the graphics where you can actually have a slideshow of all the different images that students create. And then lastly, you'll see at the top that there's a search function. When your website grows, it's gonna be harder to find materials. So here students can just type in keywords for what they're looking for, and it will pull up that specific page. 
All right, now that we've seen what a class website would look like with Google Sites, I'm going to go back and start from the beginning and show you how I made it. First, you're going to want to make sure that you're logging into new Google Sites. I wouldn't recommend using the old Google Sites anymore. You'll see at the top that there are a bunch of different templates you could choose from. I'm just gonna go ahead and start with a blank one here. The first thing that I'm going to do is add a title to the header of my homepage. And here you can see that I can also mess around with some of the different formatting options to choose how I want the header to appear. I kind of just like the default header, so I'm going to go ahead and go with that one. Next, in order to customize the website a little bit more, I'm going to change the image background of that header. Here you'll have an option to either upload your own image to the header background or choose from one of the images that's already preloaded in Google Sites. Once you find an image that you like, simply click on it and it will change the header background. Next, I'm going to add a text box in order to write a short description of what this course will be about. You'll see that you have all the different formatting options like making the text bold, italics, or changing the alignment. And you can also change the way that the text looks by changing the text type from a title to a header, for example. Then just to break the web page up a little bit, I'm going to click on divider, and there you'll see that it's added a small line that's going to divide the text from what I'm going to include next. Beneath the text, I'm now going to want to add an image. Here I could choose an image from Google Photos, but I'm going to make sure that I'm using a picture that I have copyright access to, so I'm going to upload an image that I already have from Shutterstock. You'll see when the image first gets dropped in that it's a little bit small, so I'm going to drag it around by the corners and resize it and fit it so that it looks the way that I want. And next you'll see that there's a menu bar next to the image where you can select some different options for the section background to make the image stand out a little bit more. Then I'm going to go ahead and add another image. And here I'm going to add my Bitmoji to the bottom of the website. You'll see that I'm also going to drag it around and then use an alignment tool to make sure that it's centered correctly on the page. Now that I've designed a basic home page, I'm going to go up to the themes to see what different theme options I have. First, you'll see that you can choose some different color schemes for each theme. You'll see that you also have some different options for the text style that will change the appearance of the text on the entire page. And then you also have some different choices for overall theme that will change the way your website looks. Using a combination of a theme, color, and different text type, you should be able to customize it enough so that it looks unique to you. Now that I've selected a theme that I like, I'm going to go ahead and start to add some different pages to my website. First, I'll go up to the Pages tab. Then I'm going to select to add a new page. I think it's important to have an About page, a Calendar page, an Assignments page, and a Student Work page, though of course you might decide that some of those pages don't work for you or that you'd prefer to add some additional pages. Once I've added all the pages that I want, I can select one in order to start editing that specific page. Just like I did on the home page, I'm going to start by changing the background image of the header to customize it a little bit more. Then I'm going to go up to the Insert tab and I'm going to drag in one of these pre-made templates so that I can add some images and text. Here I'm going to start by writing one of the major components of the course and then I'll include a short description of that component below. Next to the title and description, you'll see that there's a box where you can add different types of media. Here I'll just select an image again from my computer that represents something about digital literacy in this case. Next I'll drag another pre-created template below, but this time for aesthetic reasons, I'm going to want the image to be on the other side. In order to change that, all I need to do is click on the image box, drag it over to the right hand side, and you'll see that I now have some staggered image and text, and it's gonna look just a little bit better that way. Okay, so now you'll see that I'm just continuing to add different components of the course with descriptions and images that match those different components. And then at the bottom, I'm also going to add an about the teacher section where I'm going to include a picture as well as a short description about myself with some information that I want to share with students and families. Next, I'm going to go to the calendar page. I'll change the image in the header, and then I'm going to go to insert, 
And here I'm going to scroll down to calendar and select calendar. When you select calendar, you'll see that all the different calendars you're subscribed to in your Google calendar will show up. Here, since I've already created a Google Classroom called New EdTech Class Tutorial, you'll see that that also shows up as a calendar option that I can click on and embed directly into this website. Here, just like the images, I'll need to drag it around and resize it so that it looks the way that I want it to look. And then I'm going to go up to the settings to change the view because I don't like how it's set up to be an agenda view here. Instead, I'm going to select the option for it to be a monthly calendar view. So now you'll see a monthly view with all the different assignments that I've included in my Google Classroom. Since this is the calendar that's going to show up, it would probably be a good idea for me to also include important school events in my Google Classroom so that they end up showing up on the Google Sites webpage as well. And lastly, I'm just going to add a text box above the calendar to explain what the calendar is showing as well as the fact that they can click on those individual assignments and it will take them to their Google Classroom account where they would be able to view the assignment. Next, I'm going to go to my assignments page. The first thing I'm going to do is actually add some sub pages here since I'm going to want to create a sub page for each week of school. So I'm going to click add sub page, then I'll give that sub page a name. I'm going to name each sub page the dates of weeks we're having school. That way, if students miss class or if suddenly we have to shift to remote teaching, students know exactly where they need to go to find all their work for that week. Then I'm going to add a text box at the top of the assignments page to provide my students with a short description of what they could find when they click on the links for each week's assignment. The point here is that I want to basically include every single piece of information that I would be sharing in class so that we can have a more fluid transition from in-person learning and remote teaching if necessary. Even if you're not teaching remotely, it's a good practice just to post every single thing online. That way students will know what to do if they're absent and if they miss something for whatever reason, they always know where to go to get all the resources for class. Below the description, I'm going to add another text box where I will write the title of each subpage. Then I'm going to highlight the text and click on link. And instead of linking to an external web page, I'm going to create an internal link here by selecting on the sub page that I already created. So when students click on it, they'll be taken directly to that sub page. Once on a sub page, I'll go ahead and drag one of those pre made templates again onto the page. I'm going to title it with the day of the week. And then in the description, I'm going to write some short directions. Here, instead of embedding an image, I'm going to add my entire Google Slides lesson so that when students go to the web page, they'll be able to access it. You'll see when I click on the Add button that I have an option to choose a file from my Google Drive, and I'll go ahead and select my Google Slides lesson plan here. And then lastly, I'm going to add a button that students can click on that will take them directly to the assignment in Google Classroom. So I'll go to Insert and then choose Button. I can customize the text that I want to appear on that button. Then I'm going to go back to Google Classroom. I'll find the assignment on the stream, click Copy Link, and then paste the link back into Google Classroom. I can drag it around to resize it so that all the text shows up, and then place the button where I want it to go. If you want to create more of a hyperdoc experience on Google Sites, where you're essentially just giving students all the instructions for what they would need to do for a day's lesson, you can do that as well. Here you'll see under Tuesday that I'm going to add a link to a YouTube video about the topic that we're studying. And then when I'm writing my instructions for what I want students to do, I'm going to include a hyperlink back to a Padlet assignment where I want students to post about the video that they just watched. So all I need to do here is go back to Padlet, get the shareable link, and create a hyperlink and embed it into my instructions. What I did here is pretty much the exact same thing as adding a button. It's just that it's going to look a little bit different. Then below, I'm going to write some more instructions for what I want students to do next. Here I'll also add a hyperlink to a website that I want students to visit to go learn some information and then come back and take some notes. 
In the image block, I'm going to find the graphic organizer in my Google Drive folder so that they can see what it looks like. And then like I did above, I'm going to create a separate button where I'll include the shareable link to the note taker so that when students click on the button, it will take them directly there. Now you'll remember in the beginning of this video that when I clicked on the button, it asked me whether or not I wanted to make a copy of the document. The way that you force push out make a copy to students is by editing the back end of the URL. So you're going to go to the very end of the URL, delete it, and then you're going to add the word copy. And now when students click on that button, it's going to automatically prompt them to make a copy of the document so that you're not getting a flood of emails asking you for access to that note taker. The last part of designing the web page here that I'm going to show you is how I set up the student work pages. Just like I did for the assignment page, I'm going to go ahead and create sub pages for each of the different categories of student work that I want to show. Here I'm just going to show you podcasts, videos, and graphics because those are different types of files and I want to show you how to upload all those different types of files. Of course, you could add whatever categories fits for you. Again, just like I did with the assignment page, I'm going to start on the student work page by dragging in one of the templates and then including an image, a title, and description for the student work page that I'm going to create. For this podcast page, I'm going to go ahead and drag another pre-made template in. Here I'm going to choose the one that has two images side by side, as well as a space for some text beneath. First, I'm going to start by adding some images that I had students send me of graphics that they had designed for their podcast. Then, in order to embed an audio file, I'm going to go back to my Google Drive, get the shareable link, and then rather than create a hyperlink, what I'm going to have to do here is click on embed and then copy the link in. Once you've pasted that link in, you'll see that it's going to create an audio file that you can drag around, resize, and then place wherever you want it to go. Then if there are some text boxes that I no longer need, I can just click on them click the trash can, and it will delete them. Next, let's look at how to add some graphic designs. First, I'm going to drag in one of the pre-made templates. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and choose the one that has three images side by side. Then just like I did for the podcast, I'm going to upload some graphics that students created in another program. Then I'll write the name of the person that they studied, as well as copy and paste a short description that students wrote about the person they had studied. Then since I'm going to have more than one graphic design project on this page, I'm going to go ahead and add a text box to the top so that I can label this section. Next, just to show you what this would look like, I'm going to add an image carousel. So here when you add an image carousel, you're able to select multiple images at the same time so that when students open up the web page, all they have to do is click through and they can see several different images showing up at once. And just like most of the other graphics I've embedded that don't have a pre-created box, I'm also going to need to drag this around so that it looks the way that I want it to look. So let's say that you have some projects that you're not able to directly embed into Google Sites. Looking at this video report page, you'll see how I'm able to also add a hyperlink that will open another window when students click on it. Lastly, let's look at how you can add a collaborator to be able to edit the web page and how you can actually publish the web page. If you go up to the person icon at the top, that will allow you to share the web page with other people and give them editing access. I have actually done this with my students where I've given them full editing access before. It can be a little messy because students can sometimes overwrite each other's files and they can be a little bit hard to recover. So I've found that it's best for students to just give me all the files that they want uploaded and then I upload them myself. You also can't subdivide, unfortunately, so it's not possible to assign one page to a student and give them editing access without allowing them editing access for the entire website. Once you're ready to publish the website, go up to the Publish button. Here you can customize the back end of the URL. And if you don't want it to show up in public searches for privacy reasons, you can go ahead and click that option below. Similarly, for privacy issues, you can also totally control who's able to view the website. So you can set it up, for example, so that only students within your class are actually able to access it. 
And then once you've published the website, all you need to do is go up to the publish site link, copy that link, paste it in a browser, and you'll see what the final version looks like. Every time you make edits to the web page, just be sure to hit that publish button again, and it will update what shows up on the publish link. I hope you learned in this video how relatively easy it is to set up a class website using Google Sites. It is going to take a little bit more legwork up front, but I think the payoff in the end is definitely worth it. If you have any questions about Google Sites or about how I use class websites with my students, please ask in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you found the tips that I shared helpful, please share it with other teachers that you know, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. You can also check out some of the other tutorials I have on my channel by clicking on one of those two videos above. And if you're interested in downloading any of the resources that I've created and show on my videos, please visit my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com. Lastly, if you want to check me out on social media, my Twitter handle, Facebook page, and Pinterest account are all in the description below. Thanks so much and have a great week.